Hey there Linux fans, and a very good day to you. This is Digital Robin here with another live Linux walkthrough. So here we have Linux Lite now, 5.4 loaded up on the screen. And uh, straight away on first boot, I am greeted by this welcome screen. Uh, obviously when you install, you've got the option here to disable the uh, dialogue on startup. Uh, I'll leave that in there because we're only using the live ISO for the purpose of this demonstration here. Uh, so straight away you can start by installing updates, drivers, restore points and of course you set your language and change it from a light to a dark theme. Uh, no change there from version 5.2. Um, but before we do anything else I think let's take a look at how long it actually takes to do the installation. So I'm in a virtual machine here, uh, nothing on it at all, it's a clean hard disk. Uh, I've just loaded up basically the live ISO, so just imagine that we put a, a live USB key into your desktop and boot it up straight from the USB. So I'm going to now install it to my hard disk, and you can see here we've got the installation icon on the desktop, which is great. Uh, so let's just double click that one there and give this one a whirl. That's just loading now. And I've just spotted straight away on first glance looking at the taskbar uh, that uh, on first load of this USB key ISO uh, I can see that uh, my time zone is different and it appears that I am showing as uh, six hours uh, behind in terms of my time. So uh, let's just correct that quickly. So if I go into the properties here, uh, there's nothing here to allow me to change that one. So I would need to change that in my uh, locale settings there. Uh, so uh, we'll take a look at that just quickly. Uh, if I go into let's have a look at system, uh, we got any way to change that one? Uh, it was settings. Let's have a look in settings. Yeah, um, scrolling down. Uh, where we go, we should be able to look at um, settings manager and let's take a look, there must be something in here that allows me to change my location and my time zone uh, so just quickly look here, so there should be something under the system area here uh, am I missing anything in particular? Um, maybe if I do a search for time, no, uh, what about date, no, uh, region, no, uh, language, no, I find this really hard to believe, uh, but maybe I'm not going to see much change until I actually do the installation. Uh, so let's just close out of this one. So here we are now uh, doing the installation. So uh, this on first glance looks like Calamares. So yeah, let's just go through the uh, the screens now and see what we've got. Uh, so we're now selecting English and continue. Looking at the time here, it's showing as 2.40 a.m. That's not the real time for me here in the UK. Um, but I'm just looking at the clock now to see how long this installation takes. So I'm going to select English UK. This will then change the locale to English UK. And we just wait for the next screen to come through. There we go. So do I want to download updates whilst installing the Linux installation? Um, Yes, I think we'll keep that uh, selected there. Um, and in terms of installing third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware and additional media formats, uh, not really required if you are doing this inside a virtual machine, but just advise that if you are doing a local installation uh, that I would uh, obviously select this one here uh, and then continue on to the uh, next screen there. Uh, but I'm just going to leave that deselected here as I'm in a virtual machine right now. And if it does want any uh, drivers, then uh, we can go and source those after installation. So then we click continue. And we just wait for the next screen. There we go. So uh, now what do I want to do in terms of the hard disk? Well, I've got a clean hard disk here. I'm using a virtual machine. Uh, so I'm going to leave erase disk and install Linux set by default. Now it's worth pointing out that when you get to this screen here, if you are wanting to dual boot into Windows 10 and you have already created yourself a partition, 
uh, the, what you should find here, hopefully when you get to this screen here it will say install alongside Windows and if that's the case you can select that one and then it will carry you forward to either choose which partition you want to put the actual Linux Lite installation on uh, or it might even give you the option to create your partition uh, I don't normally see that one because I have two hard disks installed on my desktop here and as I'm using a virtual machine I don't need to see this at all so I'm treating this as if I was doing a clean install on a clean hard disk so I'm going to choose erase disk and install Linux uh, looking at the advanced features here uh, this allows you to set up your uh, local volume management uh, or you can go with the experimental where you can erase the disk and use ZFS now this is one of the features for Ubuntu 20.04 LTS uh, which is why it's in the experimental stage so it's up to you if you want to take the risk to be able to go ahead and do that and uh, trial out using ZFS or maybe you are a ZFS user already in my case here I'm going to select none and click OK and I'm going to move on to install now and we're already two minutes into the installation and just clicking next there so now select my location where am I so I'm in London and I'm now going to set up my credentials so what is my name what is my computer name so I'm going to call it Linux Lite uh, my username will be Robin and put in my secret safe password here and they check out the same so I've got the tick it's a fair password minimal but it's within requirements so I can continue on incidentally I just missed that one there that was the option to tell the installation to create the account and log in automatically or log in all the time you uh, load up the installation so we are now three minutes in and we begin the installation so at this moment I'm just going to pause the video and come back once this side of the installation is complete. So here we are now, installation is now complete so I can either continue on testing or I can restart the uh, PC. So let's do that now, so let's restart. So just to point out on first installation, uh, the boot time will take roughly around about a minute to two minutes depending on your hardware setup of course there um, but on next reboot then it should be a fairly quick restart process okay so that took just over um, a little, just under a, a minute to uh, configure itself on first boot so we'll do a reboot in a moment and just to prove that that won't take that amount of time now uh, on next uh, reboot so here we are now with the login screen uh, you can see here, I, I think I'm looking at Light DM for this one as my uh, display manager. Uh, so let's put in my secret safe super password here. And you can see here in this 5.4 release, uh, we have a new wallpaper. Now you wouldn't have heard that on the uh, audio there, but uh, I just got a nice little ting 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 as a kind of like nice welcome sound uh, you didn't hear that on the recording but I certainly heard that through my headphones there now before I go through and install updates and look at any drivers that I might need to install uh, let's first take a look at what wallpapers we have got here in this 5.4 release so we do a right click and we go into desktop settings and it's here now where we can see what wallpapers we have here so we're bringing through some wallpapers from version 5.2 uh, the newest I think I can see here are these colorful bluish uh, sorry brownish color ones uh, apologies that did look blue when I first looked up so my eyes were a bit uh, <laughs> bad there uh, but they adjusted quite quickly so now it looks um, uh, sort of a, a browny green color um, and if you look between here, I would say uh, you've got kind of a, a light dark theme going on here. So maybe you can set a dynamic wallpaper up um, to uh, change at various times of the day. I don't know, but um, uh, that's uh, for another video uh, in a future date. Anyway, looking at the wallpapers. So what wallpapers have we got new here? Well, I've not seen these ones here. So this world and this nice pretty flower. I've not seen that one in the 5.2 release. 
Um, but all the other ones here are being brought back through from 5.2. So what's new are these slightly brown ones here. Uh, I'm going to go with the colourful flowery one. And if I just bring back the desktop, there we go. So hopefully that's not too bad on your eyes there. But you can see as I click through, yeah, the desktop changes. Not entirely sure about this black one though. Uh, what does it look like? Um, volcanic ash perhaps? I don't know. Uh, I'm pretty sure that some car lovers amongst us will love this BMW. Uh, you got a picture of the world uh, and you get some uh, nice scenery as well as we go through and you get the Linux Lite uh, wallpapers and then you get the wallpapers coming through from version 5.2 so just to identify this as being 5.4 I'm going to select this flowery wallpaper one here now looking at the menus nothing needs to uh, really be spoken of here um, but uh, you can do some tweaking if you like to how you want the uh, Windows menu to show uh, and your desktop window uh, menus as well to show. So here I've got include applications menu on desktop right click. So if I do a right click, you can see here I've got the applications option here to be able to uh, browse into an application from here straight away. Uh, let's just say that if I did deselect that one there, uh, the applications option has now disappeared from my right click options. Let's put that back now. And uh, icons, so I normally leave these by def uh, set by default. Uh, but one thing that does niggle me is the um, removable devices. Uh, so currently you can see here um, that we have got no removable devices uh, inserted or mounted. Uh, but if I had a live USB key on an actual live desktop, uh, then you would see that listed here as something to double click and access the files on that removable device. But I normally just deselect this one because if I do actually want to access the files on my USB key for, for argument's sake, uh, then I'll go in via the file manager. Let's just close that down. And before I go any further, I'm just going to do a right click and ask that one there to arrange my desktop icons just to refresh the desktop. And you can now see that the arrangements now has changed. So we have got uh, the control panel, etc., all at the top here. And then you've got access to the actual hard disk itself there. So I'm not entirely sure what the uh, ordering of this will be exactly. But doing that arrangement basically now means I've, I've tidied myself up here. So if we go back to the actual welcome screen, uh, so let's take a look at what updates we've got. It's the first thing we're going to do, and I can see straight away from the taskbar that we do have updates available to us here, and which if I do double click that one, uh, you can see I've got the option to install updates, or I can set some preferences. So if I look at install updates, pretty much that's going to do exactly what I see here in the welcome screen. And Linux Lite will now fetch updates, which we will continue. Enter in our password. And that now goes away and does now in graphical user form um, an update as you're seeing now. So it now gives you a list of the updates available to you. Now, normally I would do updates because this is how I, I do updates personally myself through a terminal. So in this case, I would do sudo apt update. Um, but basically what you're seeing now is a graphical way to basically do that same command. So I'm going to say, well, first of all, I'm just going to check what we're getting in this update. So updates to curl, key rings, um, Python 3, uh, and a few of the uh, codecs by the looks of things. So I'm just going to update now. There's not much there in that update. It's always good to do a fresh install and get the updates before you continue on. So I've got no further prompts there. It looks to have done the job or it's still happening in the background. But if I hover over the taskbar here, I can still see that uh, there are updates to install there. So let me just take a look at the preferences quickly. So how often do you want to, the system to go and check for updates? So currently by default, it's set to twice daily. I don't mind that to be perfectly honest because I know it being Linux that some form of update will come through at some stage during the course of my my workday. 
So uh, if you are incidentally on a mobile connection accessing this via uh, a USB dongle perhaps on any tether to your mobile phone etc uh, then you can obviously select the option to use mobile connectivity. I'm just going to close this one down now. Uh, Linux Lite updates are, have now completed successfully so that did update nice in the background would you like to view the update log uh, no thank you very much that's fine so now I'm just going to look at what drivers are available to us so we're going to install some drivers now I am in a virtual machine so possibly I will not see anything listed here it will probably say no drivers available but it's worth pointing out now here for the Nvidia users amongst us uh, that um, it will be here at this point that you will be asking Linux Lite to go out and check to see uh, if there is a latest driver for your NVIDIA card there. I think they're on version 4.61 now or something like that, or the 4.61 driver, something like that. Um, but, uh, I can't really tell without uh, doing a full installation on proper hardware for this one here. But as we're running off of a virtual machine, um, yeah, I can't really do anything but basically select continue using a manually installed driver. Uh, incidentally, uh, it, there are no proprietary drivers available, so we could just leave that set there and get closed, basically. Right, we don't really need to set a restore point at this stage of the installation, uh, but um, if you wanted to, you can. Uh, what that would do is it would use the application called TimeShift. Uh, what TimeShift is, is it's, uh, well, basically it's a backup facility which takes a, a an image of your current setup and will set you up um, basically a restore point so if anything goes wrong uh, you can come back into time shift and restore back to a previous backup uh, I've never used time shift to be perfectly honest to do my backups and in reality if you are a true Linux user like myself um, you know because uh, I distro hop so much that uh, I'm quite weary about where I save my data so uh, if I decide that I want to install another distribution or I need to upgrade etc then I would have moved contents from my home folder onto an external hard drive of some sort. We don't need to do language support and if you're scrolling down here it just talks about uh, the UEFI users amongst us but now you get the option to say do you want a light theme or a dark theme. Uh, let's just select dark and see what that does. It should change there we go dark theme applied this window won't change but any other window now has changed you can see now the dark theme has come through excellent and you get some keyboard shortcuts and what to do to upgrade so this is for the 5.2 users amongst us so you should be seeing this option available to you uh, if you are installing 5.2 at any point today and just to point out that they've made some tweaks now to basically show you that you can now install Chrome, Dropbox, Kodi, Teams, Skype, Spotify, Steam, TeamViewer, Tor, VirtualBox and Zoom. So there it gives you the option to go into the software center. If you enter in your password this will refresh the packages and we'll update the software sources now so we say yes to this. Again Pretty much that's doing a sudo apt update and will actually uh, bring down the uh, updated list of repositories there. So what do we want to do? We want to install some software and OK that and just minimize this one here. So the software center is now loading and hats off to the Linux Lite team. Uh, I think I have seen this kind of uh, software manager in uh, MX Linux. Um, but uh, it's great to see it here in Linux Lite. So if you are new to Linux and you are looking at uh, Linux Lite as your test distribution, uh, then you come to the right place because here it enables you to install your favorite applications uh, using this uh, software center. So take for example, if I did want to install the Chrome web browser, I can just uh, click on that and click install and it will say you've selected the following options so yeah we've selected Chrome web browser so we'd say yes to the installation there and that will go off now and install Google Chrome stable now in theory because it's part of the uh, Ubuntu repositories I could in theory just have gone sudo apt install Google hyphen Chrome hyphen stable and then it would have gone off and downloaded it that way or 
I could have actually gone to the Google Chrome website, downloaded a dev file and actually installed the dev file using the software manager from there. Or if you're very good uh, in terms of your knowledge of Linux, you can of course install Google Chrome via the terminal as well. Of course, you would have to have downloaded the dev file to be able to uh, do the installation. But uh, yeah, if, you, if you're anything like me, uh, you would install Google Chrome that way if you were using any other distribution. But here in Linux Lite, you can install Google Chrome using its software center. So now the installation is complete. I'll just click OK there. What do I want to do now? Do I want to install more software? Uh, no, not at this stage. So I'm just going to quit you out there. Uh, now to prove that Google Chrome did get installed, we go into the menu and if we go under Internet, we will see now that we have got access to the Chrome web browser. And if we click onto that, Chrome loads up for the first time. Do you want to make it your default browser? Not really, because I like using Firefox. Do you want it to automatically send usage statistics and crash reports to Google? Not really, thank you. And there we go, Chrome has loaded for the first time. Now it's worth pointing out in terms of theming that uh, Chrome uses the uh, locally installed GTK theme. Uh, if you want to change that one, you just click on the three dots here in the top right hand corner, go into your settings, scroll down and you can see here under theme, it's using the locally installed GTK theme. Uh, so for this, I'm just going to click use classic. And you can see now that we've gone to Google Chrome's classic uh, light theme here. And if you wanted to change that to a darker theme, you click this arrow here and that will take you to Google Chrome's theme store here under the web store. And yeah, here you can select to go with bits and pieces or you can just scroll down and just say, show me jet black, show me black and white, show me slate. So I normally go with just black but because I like the look of these new themes here, I'm going to go with bits and pieces. Uh, and I need to create a key because I am now using Google Chrome. So for this one, I can set up my own key ring, which is where it will store my passwords and keep everything in a vault of some sort. Uh, incidentally, you could have created any password at that point, but I use the uh, same password as the one I used to log into the desktop web. So let's now add that to Chrome. And in a moment, there we go. You can see now that is installed and has gone dark. So if I just click the X now and I close down the tab, we are now in a permanent dark theme within Google Chrome. Excellent. Let's click get started. So what do we want to do? So let's just see what, um, oh, add bookmarks to your favorites. Um, yeah, let's do some news as well. Uh, let's do what kind of background do we want? Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Cityscape. That looks nice. Uh, do you want to set Google Chrome as your default browser? We've already done that one, so I'm going to say skip to that one. Uh, and now it's uh, happy to log you in using your Google account. So it is this point now where you can sign in using your Google account. But for now, I'll say no, thank you. And look at that. I've installed Chrome and I have now changed the theme in. And just to prove that it works, if I look at the BBC News website, for example, we just agree to that one there, click into BBC News. Yeah, there we go. We're all up and running with that one there. Excellent. So we've got a browser, our favorite browser. Uh, let's just now take a look at what we're getting out of the box in terms of applications. So looking at the menu here, if we go under accessories, uh, you've got the options to use an archive manager, uh, backups that basically links through to time shift as we saw earlier on there. Uh, you've got your calculator, which I believe is the GNOME calculator or might be using the inbuilt calculator from the XFCE desktop. Uh, you have the uh, file search which I believe, looking at the icon, uses uh, Catfish. Uh, you can browse uh, locally installed fonts there, and uh, through that manager there, you can also install your own fonts also. Uh, you've got your screenshot option there as well. Now, because screenshot, I love using screenshot, and screenshot is something I use an awful lot in my day job, so I'm just going to do a right-click and ask it to add it to my favorites. 
Uh, and again, you can now see that's added to my favorites. But what I'm also going to do is because it is something that I need to access quite regular, I'm going to do a right click and ask it to add it to my panel. And what that's done is it's put it over to the right hand side, but in a moment I will shift that across to the left to make it one of my uh, tasks within my regular taskbar. So under graphics, oh, this is good to see, you do get uh, a version of uh, GIMP installed. So if we just fire that up, hopefully that's 2.10. Excellent. And look how quickly that loads. Sweet. So GIMP is your locally installed uh, image editor. Uh, graphics and you get your photo manager also there as well and there is a paint application oh let's take a look hey does that look like paint to you nice yeah does that look like my signature actually that's not far off <laughs> that's not far off my signature I said not far it's not actually my signature though so don't uh, attempt to take any screenshots and uh, fraud me on that one there <laughs> Uh, and the internet, so we've just installed Chrome, but you've got Firefox as your default browser. Now, uh, if we just click into that, we should now be on version 87, but I'm just going to check which version you get in this uh, 5.4 release of Linux Lite. So if we go into the hamburger icon, and we go to help, and we go to about, yay, we're on version 87, which is the most recent to date. Incidentally, when you do load up Linux Lite and you use Firefox, uh, Linux Lite basically have created their own Google search page. Uh, as you can see, it's linuxliteos.com forward slash search. Um, I don't like that personally. Uh, I just uh, reset that to be my own one, like startpage.com or google.com, etc. So that was internet. Uh, multimedia, so out of the box, you get your... Pulse audio volume control, and you've got VLC as your default media player with uh, a CD burning facility there as well. Now, the reason why they include this one here is one, it is a great tool to have, uh, but two, because you are using Linux Lite, chances are you are installing it on ha older hardware with a built in DVD burner on it. Uh, that being the case, this is a great application to use to uh, rip and burn your. DVDs with basically and under office uh, we do get locally installed now uh, LibreOffice so you can see you've got spreadsheet presentation and word uh, it doesn't actually tell you that you are loading up uh, LibreOffice writer for example or LibreOffice uh, impress uh, but if I did click into that uh, you should see that it is loading up LibreOffice and there we go, LibreOffice is loaded. Now, it's worth pointing out that LibreOffice here is version 6.1, so it's not the latest. Uh, and just to prove that one, if I go into help and about, yep, so there we are, we are on 6.4 for this one. So it has done a minor update, but it hasn't um, brought down 7.1. Uh, so if I did want to install 7.1, what I would do is I would uninstall version 6.4 to begin with so for that I would do a purge uh, I won't do that in this video here now uh, I would uh, obviously do that offline when I uh, do my testing here today uh, but if you did want to uh, uninstall that one uh, then yeah just check out some more videos around uninstalling older versions of LibreOffice now I would advise uninstalling first before you go to the LibreOffice and download an updated 7.1 release so in the system now, we've got options to access the terminal. Uh, the terminal is accessible via the obviously menu, and you've got it here within the panel directly. Uh, you've got Task Manager. So if we look at the Task Manager now, uh, this is using the GNOME Task Manager, is my understanding. Uh, but here it lists all of the processes and how much memory and uh, CPU is being used. So my CPU, very low at the moment. Look at that, only about 2%, not even doing anything. That's great. Uh, memory wise yeah just using a quarter of my ram uh, i'm not worried about that at all because you know it is a light installation after all uh and uh yeah in terms of the swap it's using absolutely nothing which is great so uh, yeah i do have chrome open with one tab so the more tabs that i open obviously chrome being chrome it uses up a lot more ram but um 
yeah, uh, it's down to you, the end user, really, uh, to, you know, experience what it's like to uh, see RAM being heavily used within this. So that's your task manager. And uh, what else have we got? So we have got a system restore utility. So there's access to your time shift. Uh, process viewer. This is probably HTOP. Yep, this is HTOP. Uh, so here we can see what processes are currently running. So if you're finding that you are experiencing one application that's crashing, uh, normally you can come into HTOP here, uh, find the application which is using up quite a lot of CPU usage or is stuck in the cycle. Normally it will appear just at the top here and doesn't budge. Uh, if that be the case, then obviously you would then just select it using your keyboard and then you can come here and press F9 to kill that process. So take for example, I have HTOP running here now. Uh, I've selected HTOP. If I press F9, uh, it will say, okay, do you want to kill this? And I'm going to press enter and I have killed HTOP. Simple, it's so easy. Uh, and also you've got the option to configure your printers. Uh, just looking in behind me here. Yep, I can see I've got my wireless printer selected already on. So let's just see if we can get that added. Uh, let's see, now I'm on a network printer, wireless one. So let's see if that will find that automatically. I may or may not need to put in an actual address for this one. Uh, where I find network printer, we did that one. Okay, I think it might not find it here. It is a virtual machine uh, after all. So hopefully it will find that. Uh, we can't find it under cups. In fact, let's see if cups is installed. So let's just give that a try. So here I'll run the local host on port 631. Let's see if, yes it is, excellent. So here I can go under administration and add a printer. Put in my credentials. Now, normally you would uh, install printers using the, obviously the wizard here, uh, but uh, as it's using cups, I normally install my printer via the cups facility. Uh, so for here, I'm going to select, it is a HP printer, and I'm going to uh, select continue. Uh, connection, please enter URL. Okay, uh, can I put in, no, I can't. I don't know. I don't know. Let's give it a try. Uh, I know my web address for this one. 192.168.1.253. That should be the one for my printer. Give it a name. HP. ND. If I go here. Uh, description. Uh, oh, in one. Enter. My location is office. Let's just see if that, yeah, so it's going to error. Of course it will. Find new printers. My printer is on. So you're only finding a virtual. Yeah, that's expected because I'm with inside a virtual machine here. But if I was installing Linux Lite to actual hardware, then I wouldn't be experiencing these issues at all. So I think we can scrap that one. But anyway, just worth pointing out that it uses cups for its print server. So it's no problem at all. Excellent. Good. Incidentally, it's good to note that uh, if you've got um, slightly older printer hardware, such as Brother, Epson's, etc., uh, that's all supported here within Linux Lite, which is very good to know. So yeah, so that's pretty much it. So we've gone through Linux Lite 5.2. So really, if you compare that, to, uh, sorry, this is 5.4. If you compare that against 5.2, I'm not really seeing any visual changes. So what we are seeing really in this release is more to bring the base up to the Ubuntu base, which of course is 20.04.2 on an LTS build. Um, Oh yeah, and incidentally, if I just now do a search for about, so let's see, so it's got system information. Let's have a look here. So if we have a look, we're running Linux like 5.4. Uh, 
uh, on four gigs of RAM. Obviously, we're using this inside a virtual machine. No printer installed. It's using an internal audio. Uh, what was I going to look at? So, kernel. It's using 5.4. Oh, yeah. Right. Indicated here. And where are we going? Where else are there? So, operating system. So, the Linux Lite 5.4. Uh, using the kernel 5.4 uh, shows you the uptime and all the details here so normally you can get that information from uh, a terminal and if I just bring this up here oh wow look at this that I love this terminal straight away how do you do that I'm gonna have to find out how you do that this is fantastic so uh, while I'm here I'm just gonna do a sudo apt update and see if there are any updates available to me there shouldn't be now because I've already done an update would say nothing available. I'll be surprised if there is. Yeah, almost there. Yep, we're all up to date. Excellent. So there's no need for me to do this standard sudo apt upgrade. No requirement for that one there. But what I am going to do is uh, do a sudo pkcon update and update the packages now. Yep, so that's done. And um, we're up to date. Excellent. Uh, let's give that a clear. Uh, is NeoFetch installed? Let's take a look. Nope, so we do a sudo at install NeoFetch. Let's say yes to that. And momentarily we should have NeoFetch installed now. So let's just clear that and go into NeoFetch. There we go. So here we get our system information now showing that we are running Linux Lite 5.4 with inside a virtual machine on a kernel 5.4 and we are running the XFCE desktop. You can see desktop environment listed here. So it doesn't say which version of XFCE is running. Definitely showing no signs of it being 4.16. Um, but let me see, can I go into... Uh, let's just, well, let's just see what we get. XFCE. Doesn't say. Normally under about, if you are running XFCE, you do actually see what uh, version of XFCE you're using. So about means not going to do anything, is it? No, I thought so. Hmm. But anyway, I'd say on first glance that I'm running as 4.14 uh, as my XFC desktop environment here, which is most likely because we are using Ubuntu base 20.04.2 for this one here. So most likely uh, XFC 4.14 currently still in use with Linux Lite here. So there you have it, Linux Lite 5.4. I've had a nice click through, running smooth. Excellent. Let's just see. It says I've got updates. No, no updates. Excellent. In fact, I think if I change the preferences, uh, there's no way for me to make that icon disappear. Okay. Uh, what did I say I was going to do with the panel? Now, if we do a right click on the panel quickly and go into add new items, uh, I'm just going to see if the weather applet is installed, which it's not. So good choice for me to do a control T to bring the terminal up and I'm just going to go sudo apt install xfce4 goodies yes we install those and that looks like it's brought through additional plugins for me to use now so we just wait for this to complete Done. So we close that one down. And if now if I right click and go to panel and add new items, I should now have the weather applet. There we go. Let's add that in quickly. Uh, what else do I like? So I like to see the show desktop. There we go. And uh, what else do I like? Uh, is the um, System load monitor. There we go. 
All right, so that's done now. So a few of the nice things there that I like to see in my XFCE panel. So if I go into panel preferences now, I can change the order of how they appear. So the system load, I can shift up. And as you can see now in the taskbar, I'm moving it around. Uh, in fact, let's see, do I want to... Yeah, that would do. Now you saw earlier on that I did actually add screenshot as a favorite in my panel. So that here is this launcher. So I'm just now going to move that up through and bring it into my frequent tasks here under my taskbar. Now you can see I've moved that down here to the left hand side where it was on the right previously. So I'm happy with what I've got now in terms of my setup in the panel here. Uh, so let's now do some quick configurations. So for the weather update, I select this and then click this hamburger icon. And uh, you can see here that already it's detected that I'm in Medway in Chatham. Um, no, that's not the case, but if that's the case, uh, you can change it there. So I am actually in Rochester. Uh, so if I do a search for that, I can do Rochester Kent and OK that. There we go. So that's now changing my latitude, my longitude and my altitude and getting me the correct weather update for that one there. In terms of units, we are Celsius, of course. Uh, appearance, um, it does use liquid by default, but I normally switch that to liquid dark. Uh, I use a single panel, which is great. Uh, now, what units do I actually want to see within the scroll bar itself? So uh, let me just click into scroll bar and we don't have anything there at the moment. It is showing that uh, we have got um, overcast skies, which we have at this present moment in time. But I don't know what the temperature is. So I'm just going to select temperature from this drop down, uh, click add. And you can now see that I've got the temperature gauge appeared here in the bottom right hand corner. I can also bring through other values as well. So show me the wind speed. I can also show me the wind direction. Show me if there's going to be any rain today. So let's have a look at, uh, I don't know, a dew point. And we'll look at what the ambient temperature is. Uh, is it foggy outside? Is it cloudy? I know it's very cloudy out there today. Um, what else can we bring through? Pre precipitation for the rain as well. So we'll add that there. So you can chop and change, add these, move them around. Uh, I'm quite happy with that order there. So animate transition between labels. That means, as you can see now, in the bottom right-hand corner, that it is animating, which is great. That's how I like to see that. I'm happy with that, so I'll click Close now. And uh, what else do I need to do? So my clock is uh, a bit wrong. So I'm going to do Date and Time and click into the menu options here. Uh, it's showing us time only. I don't like that. I like to see date then time. Uh, it's done that, but uh, it hasn't done it exactly to my liking. It's now put the date on top and the time on the bottom. So I will stick to date only. Let's just see time only. Yeah, okay. Looking at the format now, we can change that. So it is uh, a minimal there we go so what are we going to show now so it should be showing now day month year uh let's do date then time there we go thursday april the first that's fine uh yeah that's all good uh, and i can change the font size as well make it smaller make it larger not a problem at all there all good you can see that it's ticking away quite nicely there do that not exactly to my liking, but that's XFC for you. Um, but there are other clocks available. <laughs> Go and find them there. So yeah, so that's me now up and done, up and running and ready on Linux Lite 5.4. Um, yeah, let me know how you get on with your installation today. So here we are, April the 1st in 2021, exactly six months to the day uh, since we had 5.2 released. So if you are on existing 5.2, you should be able to, from right this moment now, be able to upgrade to 5.4. So there we go, Linux Lite 5.4. Uh, this has been Robin Just with a live Linux walkthrough. If you'd like to get in touch, you can follow me on Twitter at Robin Just or head on over to my website there, which is digitalrobin.net and follow me via those channels there. 
Thanks very much for watching and I will catch you again in the next video.